Today I thought I would uh, do something that everybody, it's everybody's favorite, hanging drywall. I actually, uh, I love it. I, I enjoy drywall, I enjoy doing the taping, I like it all. So I thought I'd just take a, a short video here and just show you how to do everything from hang, cutting it to hanging it to taping it. Um, and maybe you won't hate it as much. Yeah, I finished hanging all this room, uh, ceiling, everything's done except for this last wall, but uh, I figured I could just show everything on this wall with uh, the corners and uh, inside and outside corners, and uh, maybe we'll do a joint too. Uh, first thing you got to do is you got to measure for cutting. And we're going to go out to the outside edge of this drywall right here. The reason, the reason is, I'll show you in a minute, but um, basically it's because of the corner bead that's going to go on there. If you were going to put, um, if you're going to put the bull nose, the round stuff, you would want to stop it here and leave sort of a little, the corner off, so that, that so that the roundness has a place to go. But we're going to go square corner, so we're going to clear out to the end of the end of the drywall. And anyway, I'm at 27, 27 and a half. I know I said 27 and a half. I'm going to cut this a little short because it never seems to break right on a straight line. It's always rougher and uh, you can always tape a gap. So I'm going to mark it at 27 and a quarter. You notice I marked it with a V. Uh, a v. Most people um, do that just because if you put a mark on here, is it here? Here, where, where was my mark? So a V is pretty definitive, right? So that's right exactly where the, um, the chalk line is going to go. All right, and I use a chalk line to uh, draw my line. I don't like to use straight edges and stuff. They just tend to move around on me and never seem to have one long enough. The chalk lines work really, really well. This is all you need to cut your drywall, is a uh, utility knife. When, when I cut, I tend to hold the blade at a fairly shallow angle. And that allows the, the blade to sort of guide itself and keep a straight line. If you cut it, if you cut this way, I'm trying to see the camera at the same time. <laughs> you have, it wants to just pivot on this point, and it's hard, much harder to keep a straight line. So hold your Hold your knife fairly flat and just draw it along. The other thing is, look at the line while you're cutting. Look ahead. It's like driving. You don't look at the road right in front of your car. You look at the road somewhere in front, way in front, so you know where you're going to go. And cutting is the same way. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to be looking at my tape, my chalk line, somewhere in this area, just so I know where I'm going. Holding my blade fairly flat. Okay. Now the next thing you do is you're gonna break it. Well, that's all you have to do. You just, have to, you're just basically to cut the paper. So. The drywall at this point is um, cut. It's still the paper still attached to the back side. I'm just gonna my knife and cut that paper off on the back. All right. Generally, a good idea to figure out where your studs are before you uh, cut them up with drywall. So I got one at 13 and a half. One at 23. And then one at 26 and four. Something else I wanted to bring up about drywall. You can't, I don't know if you can really see it, but you can see it gets narrower here at the end. And they do this on a, 
for a reason. Um, and notice I'm on my joints, so I got these, these edges together, this finished edge. And so they can put tape in there and it'll be nice and flush with the nice and flush with the surface. Um, when we do this corner here, I'm going to make sure I put it with the, the, the tapered edge here and a full and a full edge out on the out on the corner here. Um, again, just because of the, the, the corner bead I'm gonna put up, it'll just go up a lot easier if I don't have to deal with having a shallow spot. If it's the same thickness, it'll be a lot easier on me. See what I tell you, 27 and a half. I cut it at 27 and a quarter. Look at, look at that. It's like, <laughs> it's perfect. But um, if I had to cut it where I thought I was supposed to cut it, it just never seems to go in there small. <laughs> it always goes in big. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about bits, drywall bits. Um, I have used these guys for years. They're just a little short thing put it in your drill. The collar um, keeps you from going too deep and lets you sink it in real nice. Um, they're like four bucks for a package of four or something, but they will save you tons of aggravation if you're not quite used to where it goes anymore. And I pretty much just use screwdriver tip and just stop when I need to. I use the uh, coarse thread drywall screws. They're black. Um, these are actually just a little bit longer than I needed, but um, I had a huge box, so that's what we're using. All right, so I've already marked my. Um, I put a mark on where my where my studs are. I'm gonna go ahead and set a screw in. You can see how deep I put that. Maybe you can see how deep I put that. See if I can get here closer. Basically, you want your screw down below the surface of the drywall. Um, because if you're running your knife uh, over it and, and you're, you're trying to tape it, and your knife is hitting that screw, for one, you can't get a good clean joint or a seal. You can't just hit a good clean mud over it. Um, but you're going to see it. It's going to be a lump. You're going to see the screw head coming out. So you need to get it just below the surface. You don't want to go way deep. You don't want to. You don't want to take it to where it really crushes the drywall or goes all the way through it. That won't do you any good either. It just needs to kind of break the surface and go in. So I'm I'm in maybe a I don't know maybe a thirty second of an inch or so on that hole. Let's see if I can find. Here's a so here's a great example of what you don't want. All right, this screw is sticking out of the wall. Um, it's not going to do anybody any good. That's got to come out of there because when I, I just can't cover that with mud. So don't do that. Before we start taping, I want to talk a little bit about tools. This is a putty knife. Don't use this for taping drywall, especially if it's smaller than this. Don't do it. Not the right tool. You're just going to make your life miserable. Drywall knives. I use two um, at a time, and you'll see what I do with it. I mean, basically, I hold it. I use one as a palette, and I use one as a um, knife to cut it. But I kind of go back and forth between the two. Um, that's just what I do. A lot of guys will use the the plastic trays with a metal edge on it, and they'll just use a single knife and they'll hold the tray and they'll be dipping in and, and cleaning their knives on that knife, that metal edge. Um, I have just kind of grown accustomed to using two knives, and that's just what I do. But use knives. Don't use a putty knife. Use a drywall knife. They're made of spring steel. They're thinner. They're a little more flexible. Um, you want them with a nice straight edge on them. So, the other thing. Let's talk about tape. This is tape that a lot of people like to use. Uh, it's got a, a real mild adhesive uh, on it so when you put it on the wall you basically just stick it on the wall and it's there um, a lot of people like this stuff because it's very easy to tape a room and you can just well it's very easy to put the tape up i don't know about taping per se uh, 
I don't like this stuff. <laughs> and I'm kind of old school uh, in, in what I do, and um, what I like is paper tape. And this is paper tape. It comes with a nice little, you see it or not, I don't know, there's a crease right down the middle for it, so when you put your corners in, you just bend around the crease. Uh, otherwise, it goes in flat, and you just put it on the wall over your joints. And we'll be using the paper tape, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, I'm going to tape just a small portion of this corner um, because that's all my camera is really showing, and then I'll probably just take this off and. And start over again once I once I back away from the camera. So I mentioned the crease. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my fold my paper so that it will fit in the corner. And um, don't worry about the gaps. The gaps are actually kind of a good thing. Helps your drywall suck into something. Um, but anyway, I'll show you how I do the corner. And we'll just do a small piece of it. All right. So this is. I mentioned using the, the, the knives as my palette, so um, this is what I will do. Just kind of mix it, put, put enough mud, joint compound, whatever you want to call it, um, on your knife. To get the, in the corner, I probably got. Sixteenth of an inch, quarter of an inch thick, maybe I don't know. Uh, in there, and you'll notice me. I'm always, I'm always cleaning my knives. Um, I can't tell you how important it is to have a clean knife. If your knife has got stuff growing on the back side of it, uh, and it will just happen, you can almost see it right there, a little bit, just right off the. The first one I spread it. Um, that stuff will end up on the back. One of them just screwed up your finish joints. So just keep your knife clean. It's your life is a whole lot easier. And I've got to, usually got a bucket of water here that I'm gonna that I'll use to uh, to wash them in. And I wash them all the time. All right. So the tape's gonna go in now. This tape should go the entire length of the joint, not just this little piece. I'm just doing this just so you can see it. Hold my knife, I'm holding it fairly flat. I'm not holding it this way, I'm holding it kind of this way. And I'm pressing that tape into the joint. You can see how much mud came off. Um, you want to keep this mud as thin as you can. If you let it get real big, thick, or keep it real thick in there, you're going to be sanded for the rest of your life. And um, believe me, that's not what you want to do. All right, so there it is. That's um, uh, that's my first corner, and I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and do it for real now. And but that's all there is to it. That's and this is the first coat of tape. You get it there, and you leave it. Let it dry. Don't screw around with it. Don't add more mud to it. Don't just clean nice long broad strokes. You saw me go the length of the surface. You want to do that if you're. If you find yourself in here going like this, you did it wrong. <laughs> nice clean strokes is going to give you a nice clean surface. If you're screwing around with it, like with hash marks and just trying to get it smooth with little bitty pieces and small knives, um, it's never going to look right. So just go long, straight, um, clean, smooth strokes. Okay, just patching holes. Um, that's all there is to it. I use a cross hatch, so I'll kind of move one direction or the other. You don't see a lot of drywall out here. Nice and smooth. It'll shrink in. You'll do two coats. All right, I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do this joint just like I did the corner. I'm just do a small section of it just so you can see um, how it goes in there. Decent amount of mud on your tape, right down the center of it. 
And basically, I'm just going to spread it out. But knife it off. And in this case, I just buggered it up. That's it. We'll leave it like that. Now, remember I showed you the, the beveled edges. You can see how the drywall just kind of, the mud just kind of fits those bevels. So when I do my knife attack, I've got a nice smooth joint. Again, keep it, keep it low. Try to keep it as thin as you can, because otherwise you're going to have a big lump and you're going to have to sand that off. Um, don't want that. And I'll show you this after it dries, but it will shrink and actually draw itself into the wall. All right, well, you can see uh, I got mud on there. Um, it's like the only thing in my life that, that I do liberally. Um, I got my thin edge going over here, my longer edge going over here in the middle. And basically all you do is just sort of press it on place. Get it on the corner. And I use my hands on this one just to push the tape into the mud, but um, I'll take my knife, and you see how clean my knife is, because I always clean my knife, and I always work with a clean knife, just like you should, and we'll scrape out the, the excess mud from underneath, we can see this, but there's a bead, you can see there's a bead right here in the corner. It's actually raised up, and if you can see in here, but I'm not going to move the camera again, there's a gap between, you follow a straight line from here to here, there's a gap all along here uh, because of that bead. Uh, it's raised up further. So we're going to end up filling all of that with mud, uh, and that's what will give us our nice smooth uh, transition, uh, nice smooth corner, and even though it won't be perfectly square, because they never are, um, it will be very smooth, and that's exactly what you want. That's it. We got a quarter now. And uh, when you saw how long that took, that's nothing. Um, now, granted, this is the first coat, and we need to let it dry. We don't need to screw around with it. Um, when it dries, I'll come back in, I'll put a second coat on, um, and we'll probably do a third finish coat, a real thin finish coat, but um, that's it. There's nothing to it. Okay, I wanted to take a second too to point out a um, couple of things. First of all, I wanted to see up close and personal what my first coat looks like. It's not a thing of beauty. <laughs> But, I don't, it's, but it's fine, it works, it does exactly what I needed to do. It got the tape stuck to the wall and it gave me a good foundation for working. The other thing is that it's smooth, it's low. If you, if you can see my knife, um, this is actually still lower than the surface of the drywall here, which is great because now I can fill that with mud, I can get a nice, clean, flat joint uh, and it'll look really well. well. We'll go back to this same spot here in a minute after I've gone ahead and put a second coat in so you can see what it looks like. But basically the idea is it's in smooth and it doesn't protrude above the surface of the drywall. So, and if it did like um, any of my nail holes or whatever would, screw holes would do, they're going to be so wide by the time I'm done that you won't see them on the wall. So anyway, I'm going to point that out. It may look terrible. Your first coat can look terrible. As long as the base and the foundation is good, um, you'll be fine. Okay, uh, a couple of other points. Um, you probably, I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, my, my knife is wet. 
I like working with a wet knife um, just because I think it glides a little bit easier. Uh, and plus, it's clean, clean knives. Uh, but I thought I'd show you a couple things on, on this. Uh, I'm still using all-purpose joint compound, uh, mud. A lot of guys will use topping compound. I've used it. It's really nice. It's a lot creamier. It's thinner. It's easier to put up. But I got half a tub of this left, so this is what I'm using. And you can use it too. Uh, I use it all the time for finishing. It just takes a little more effort, uh, but not significant. So I want to show you how to put it on. Um, like, like any other time, I'm fairly liberal with it. And you see that I'm, I'm spreading it out crosswise, horizontally across the joint. Um, the reason I'm doing that is to make sure that I'm wide enough to cover the, the seam. I know the seam runs about here, so I want to make sure I have enough. You need a big blade. Uh, I think this is 14 inches, probably. Maybe it's 12, I don't know. But you want a big blade so you can feather this stuff out. Um, nice, even, smooth strokes. Um, and sometimes it'll take more than one to get, it, to get it where you want it. But you don't want to work it forever. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. The other thing I wanted you to see, let's see if I can find this spot on the camera. Right about there. So right here, I've got a piece of drywall. The mud is high, and there's a definite ridge right there. I can feel it. Um, what I do is rather than try to sand that down, is I will take my, my skin coat, the second coat of mud, and I will feather it out and fill it in like so, uh, so that in this spot now I put mud in that low, in that where that ridge was, and now it's a nice gentle grit. Um, you can't, you won't fill it. It's a nice gentle um, slope. There's not, a, there's not a hard transition. So you might consider that too. Rather than sanding, I hate sanding. Rather than sanding, fill it and just feather it out. Feathering is your friend. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, and do some more here. I'm going to do some. I'll do a corner. I think I'll do a corner next. Okay, let's talk corners because uh, they are probably the inside corners are the hardest thing you're going to do. Uh, without a question, they're the hardest thing you're going to do. Here's what I do to make it a little bit easier. I start on one side and I'll get it into the corner. I feel like Bob Ross. I was a little bead of mud on the end of my on the end of my uh, knife. So that gives me that allows me to, to, to spread it right into the corner. Once I've got that done, uh, then I'll come back in and I'll feather it. Uh, it's going to take a couple of here, obviously. Right. We'll stop there. Um, and then I let that set. I don't typically do the other side right away, uh, although you can. Um, the problem most people run into when they're doing the other side. You're going to screw it up what they just put up. And so, I'll show you how to kind of deal with that a little bit here. And my corner is not going to be perfect after the first coat. After the second coat, there's still going to be a little bit, but the skim coat I put on after all this is all dry, will hide everything and it'll be wonderful. Okay, so a quick knife cleaning. Um, Basically what you want to do, what happens is, is this edge of your knife, typically we're doing it, we're holding the knife, and it's going to end up digging into that corner. So all you really need to do is be careful to hold your knife at an angle like this and come down. And yes, you're going to see a little line in the corner unless you're just absolutely perfect at this, which only professionals seem to be. But it looks good enough, and I'm telling you right now that that crease in the center, we put our last coat of mud in there um, because we're going to have to go in so thin. Uh, it'll be perfect, it'll look great, and you'll be happy. So you can do one side, when you do the second side, just be careful to kind of angle your knife away so you're not dragging this, that way you're not dragging here and you end up with a big groove. Okay, here's another rule. 
<laughs> this is like the old Kenny Rogers song, The Gambler. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Walk away. So this section here, I tended to overwork. It wasn't right. I kept working it. And the only thing that happens when you keep working is it, it gets worse. So just, it's better just to let it dry like it is. It's good enough and come back and get it on another coat. You can see all the streaks. You can see there's a spot here where there's like a blemish. It's ugly. It'll be fine the next coat around. You just have to walk away. No one to quit. Quit earlier, quit earlier than later. Okay, so here's one more tip. Um, I know, it's like a million and one tips here. But this is important, uh, and um, I'm not sure how I forgot to say anything about it, but part of the reason I clean my knives is I don't want dry mud contaminating my wet mud. Um, and you can see around the edges here, it's dried, it's hard, or at least harder. Um, there's a piece that looks like it's getting ready to, to fall into the bucket. Um, if that stuff gets into your wet mud, it will be a nightmare for you to finish because you're going to get these, it'll be clumps, it'll streak, um, you'll fight it, you'll fight it, you'll fight it. So try really, really hard to keep dry mud out of your wet mud. And that's one big reason is I keep, I keep my knives as clean as I do, is I don't want dry stuff falling in the bucket when I'm working on it. Okay. To do one of these things, uh, I'm going to, again, fairly liberally put uh, mud up on the wall, take it out to the corner, and I'm just using my, just using my small knife to just kind of get it on the wall at this point. Uh, in order to get, do the joint, basically all you're going to do, rest, and there you can see it. Rest your, the corner of your, your knife on the, cor on the corner of the wall. And you're just going to bring it down. Like, like so. A couple of low spots. Let me go. Change the slides here. And we'll just put all those guys in. That's all there is to it. So it goes from looking like that to looking, you can't even see the corner here of my eyes, uh, looking like that when it's done. And that's it. Pretty simple. Uh, we do a finished coat, we'll just do the same thing, but very, very thin. I mentioned uh, when I started this video that uh, the drywall mud will shrink and suck itself into, uh, into the divots and into the cracks and things that you, you put up. And, I think I've neglected to show any of that, and it's probably too late now with all the second coat already being on. But I saw this this morning and thought it would be a, a good example. This is dry, um, and when you can see the outline here around the dark line, that's where it was uh, when it was wet. And so it's, it shrank up quite a bit as it dried overnight. Um, I do get a little bit, a little bit on the floor here and there. Okay, this is kind of the last step, um, putting the finished topping coat on. Uh, it goes on really, really thin. Uh, I do it anyway really thin uh, for a couple reasons. When it's thin, it's hard to make have imperfections when it's thin. Um, but it just gives, it also gives me an opportunity. You can see, let me focus here. You can kind of see that that isn't perfectly smooth. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not perfectly smooth. And then. Um, maybe here's an example of it sucking, uh, sucking into the wall just a little bit. You can kind of see the line there. Um, I got some streaks in the second coat. Um, again, it doesn't feel bad. Uh, it looks actually, you know, not terrible. But uh, when I put the topping coat on, it'll look great. So I'll put that on. I'll show you how I do that, and then we'll be done. Okay, we always start with. Clean knives. All right. Get a blob of mud. This, I'm just going to work this small section, then I'll back the camera up and show you the whole wall. But uh, 
the idea is I want to just get some mud on. And I just put a lot of mud on there. I will take it out beyond the edges of the second coat. So I want to be able to feather it. Use my big knife here. Get rid of some of this. See how easy that becomes with jersey. Anyway, we're just going to take nice, long, even strokes. Feather it out so that it's, uh, you can see how thin it is. You can see right through it, it's so thin. But that will dry nice and smooth. It won't be any hard, hardly anything that I have to sand. Uh, maybe just a light, a light, 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 light sanding on the edges, but uh, really should be pretty good. Uh, the action of drawing it this way will fill in all of those lines that I had. Uh, if I look at it now, it looks really good. So, uh, long, simple, long, smooth strokes are best. I, I told you, if you're doing this stuff, stop it. You're doing it wrong. Long, smooth strokes uh, is what you need. So, uh, that's pretty much it. I'll show you the finished room, um, hopefully this afternoon. Well, here it is finished. I didn't show you the sandy because it's boring and I hate sanding, but I didn't sand it much. If I, uh, you can see it's pretty smooth here and lots of dust. If uh, I was going to texture, I might not have sanded it at all. So it wasn't terrible, but anyway, that's what it looks like. That's what it should look like when you're done.